What's going on everybody? My name is Mario. This is a channel all about amusement park type stuff, but mostly coasters. And today we have a short little review of Carolina Gold Rusher at Carowinds. Now I do have a whole other full video ranking and reviewing every other mine train coaster that I've been on prior to Carolina Gold Rusher. So check that out after this video. And at the end of this one, I'll go ahead and let you know how Carolina Gold Rusher stacks up against those. But without any further ado, let's review. Carolina Gold Rusher is a charming little Little. It's a charming little baby mine train. Carolina Gold Rusher is a charming little aerodynamics mine train that opened all the way back in 1973. This makes it Carowind's oldest roller coaster. That being said, it is still a fantastic attraction for smaller thrill seekers, and it is definitely worth a ride during a visit to the park. Carolina Gold Rusher is on the smaller side when compared to other mine train coasters. It features a top speed of 30 miles per hour, just under 2,400 feet of track and a ride duration of just 31 seconds when deducting the time spent on the lifts, the brakes, and the slow pre-lift section. This coaster is located in the middle of Carowinds, with its entrance residing across from Carolina Cyclone in the aptly named Carolina Boardwalk section. Heading up to ride this coaster, you're greeted with a charming postcard entrance sign, wooden railings, plenty of trees, and an old train engine. Up at the station, even if this coaster has a short line, you may still have to wait a while. By no fault of the operators themselves, this coaster has slow operations. Each of the ride's five cars must be locked and unlocked manually, and the ride has a long cycle time. This frequently results in five plus minutes between dispatches. Once you do load, you'll notice that this coaster's stature isn't the only small thing about it. While Carolina Gold Rusher definitely has nice looking trains, the seats of each row can be a bit difficult for anybody over the age of five. There is a comically small amount of room to sit on. I don't know that I got any video of the seats themselves, but it's like, it's like that much space, which left only like half of my butt on the seat each ride. The leg room is very minimal for taller guests as well. Now, these trains do seem like they were retrofitted with some really bulky padding, which is the culprit of the limited space. So I do appreciate that padding was added to help combat the discomfort from wonky mine train track profiling. But now let's take a look at the layout. You start out with a very long pre-lift section that likely doesn't go much above five miles per hour before hitting your first of two lift hills. This is followed by some long straight track, a banked turn to the right before turning to the left and experiencing an upward helix. And I do have to admit this helix is incredibly fun, not because you're traveling particularly fast, but because of the proximity of the wood beams passing over your head. The expression hand choppers is thrown around quite a bit, when referring to elements that come very close to a ride's track, but hand choppers is typically a figure of speech, whereas I'm fairly convinced that if you were to put your hands up on this ride, you would likely touch the beams. So definitely keep your hands and legs inside the ride for Carolina Gold Rusher. Your speed quickly dissipates as you enter into the ride's second lift hill, which is again followed by another long section of straight track. This time a downward helix is what directly follows that, where you gradually pick up speed and and experience another nice set of hand choppers as you travel through the helix's support structure. That's followed by a drop down into a tunnel, which provides a nice pop of floater airtime in the back of the train. The tunnel itself provides some nice visuals and adds to the ride's sense of speed, and the exit out of it is definitely the wonkiest part of the ride. The track starts banking to the right well before you actually start traveling upwards, so that by the time you do, your body is aggressively thrown to the right side of the train. You then travel upwards while turning to the right into the ride's final brakes, and that's Carolina Gold Rusher for you. So, what would I rate this coaster? I'd personally say that it is deserving of a 4 out of 10. This is by no means a bad rating, I'm just not exactly the target demographic for this coaster. If I were like 10 years old or something, I would probably give this ride a solid 9 out of 10. But regardless, it ranks at number 187 out of the 241 coasters that I've been on so far, which places it right above the Dahlonega Mine Train and below the Cedar Creek Mine Ride in my rankings. When you do pick up speed on this coaster, it does feel a bit faster than Dahlonega Mine Train, but Cedar Creek Mine Ride definitely has a much lengthier ride time and a comparable sense of speed. But that's enough of my thoughts on Carolina Gold Rusher. I'd love to know what you guys think about it in the comments down below. Make sure to give the video a 
thumbs up if you liked it, subscribe and turn on notifications for more content like this, and make sure to tune in next time where I'll be talking about whatever this wheel lands on.